ready to start designing a collection. First up is for us to make a mood board. So everybody does this from small independent designers, even to big brands all across the world. So let's talk about what is a mood board and why is it important? So a mood board is a collage of images, colors, sometimes fabric swatches, usually fabric swatches, um, that kind of help you figure out the vibe of the collection you're designing. It's something that's helpful for you to refer back to as you're sketching and as you're selecting materials. Um, and it's really helpful to make sure that you get your design point of view across and that you keep your collection cohesive. This is a big deal. There are two ways to make a mood board. One way is the old fashioned way that I like, and that is to get some old magazines, some scissors, some glue or tape. I actually like double sided tape. I think this is nice. Just get to work. Pro tip. If you're just getting started out and you don't want to spend a bunch of money on magazines that you're just going to cut up, you could also go to the library. Sometimes they'll get rid of like last month's magazines um, or just like old issues for either free or maybe like a quarter or 50 cents. I mean, it's it differs depending on um, where you are, what branch you're at, but usually um, it's a great way to reuse an old magazine. Another way is to make a digital mood board. Um, this might be easier for you if you don't like the idea of um, putting one together physically, if maybe it's too tedious for you, but I would recommend that you eventually print a copy of your mood board out. I mean, you could make it in Photoshop, Illustrator, literally anything that you have. Um, I would recommend you printing one out though, just so that you have something physical maybe to pin to the wall or something while you're actually designing because it kind of keeps you focused and it makes sure that you can keep the collection cohesive while you're working. Here you can see that I titled my board just because I really like things kind of looking nice and organized and I left spaces to pin fabric swatches and samples. My mood board's a little big right now but I like to leave extra spaces on the board just in case I want to pin other things as I go along like zippers or maybe embellishments. I would also say you don't need 10 similar images. If you have one picture of a bridge, great, but we don't need any more than that. We get it, right? So when you're selecting images from a magazine, what you're looking for are images that are, they really fit in with the spirit of your collection, or they maybe really jump out to you. Try to avoid pictures of clothes though. Um, I feel like they might influence your designs a little too much. And what you're looking to do is design and not just curate. Um, the only exception that I would say is maybe, let's say you're making a collection of women's wear dresses and they're all men's wear inspired. In that case, okay, I could see that maybe you would include a few pictures of men's suits. That might be helpful. So for this particular board, I'm working on new looks for my little black dress collection. So I'm not going to bother including color swatches. Guess what? All the black dresses are black. So if I were going to make a collection that wasn't just black dresses and I was going to include color swatches in the board, it might look something like this, which eventually inspired this design. Here I wanted there to be a correlation between clean architectural lines and the curvilinear smoothness of the dancing house. You should be able to explain to someone how your mood board and your designs go hand in hand. It, it could be visually obvious, but you should be able to really explain how your inspiration translated into an actual garment.
Either way, my mood board is something that I'm going to refer to numerous times while I work on the collection. I even keep a picture of it on my phone while I'm collecting fabric swatches and shopping for trims. As I edit down my final looks, I always look at my mood board and I decide if the looks fit into the mood board or not. That's a great way to, once again, keep your collection cohesive. So I hope that this was helpful in getting you started. And this is something that I do for every collection I design. This is kind of my jumping off point. So as usual, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys when we get to the next step. Bye.